Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. Today I'm going to be looking at the Warrior X3, going to be reviewing it. I've used it for a couple of weeks now. I think I've got a pretty good grip and understanding of what this light is about. And it's been an interesting journey because there are some features on this light that I've never seen before on other lights, things like the magnetic charging. It's also got this vibration feature. I worked that out when I turned on the light, it just started vibrating and I thought, what, what is going on here? But it has a three stage vibration setting here. It just tells you how, what the battery uh, percentage is like after 20%, it vibrates at different frequencies. Olight is more of a mainstream flashlight brand. It's very popular, both with enthusiasts and you know people that are just getting into lights. Maybe they're going for a hiking trip or something like that. You do see them down at you know those camping and fishing stores as well. The X3 is a tactical thrower with all the bells and whistles. And it also comes with a five year warranty these are some of the included things you get with the lights so uh, you get a tactical ring okay well there's two rings you have one already on the light this is the one that i actually installed myself so you can choose from both you take off the tail cap and uh, you basically just pull off the ring okay it's got a couple of o-rings there that uh, hold it in place um, this one here you just basically slot on in the same way and you can then screw on the tail cap and i like that it doesn't really move around it feels very firm it's made of steel as well it's magnetic olight also include a holster which is a nice little addition it's got a magnetic magnetic uh, clip there and you basically just pop that light in closes down very easily. It's got a hole at the bottom as well, so you can charge the flashlight using the magnetic charger. So if you want to charge it in the holster or if you just want to charge it externally, and the charging connects like this. So you don't even have to take the battery out. You basically just uh, you know stick it on the back there, plug it into a USB port, rated at two amps, maximum two amps, as you can see here on the back. I'll just show you the battery that it, uh, that you get as well with the light. So this is proprietary cell, Olight 21700 cell, 5000 milliamp hour. And this is what they've done here with the, the top of the flashlight. So there's like a positive and a negative terminal. Here's a comparison of the Warrior X3 with a few other flashlights of a similar or same sort of size. And uh, you can see here, you know, it's got a larger bezel compared to all the other lights, probably similar to my next torch one. Yeah, very similar. Uh, some bezel is still larger by a touch, but it does have some excellent throw. It throws the best out of all of these lights just due to that increased bezel size. Okay, uh, but you have like a couple of these Phoenix lights that also have the SFT70, same LED as in the Warrior X3. Got uh, Next Torch here, one of the larger sort of tactical lights that I own in the uh, Nikon P23i. So yeah, very similar size. I mean, the head is a bit larger but um, on par pretty much with the rest of these all righty so here's a close-up of the construction so you can take a closer look and overall i'm really impressed machining is high quality no defects no imperfections cutouts on the head are also nice to look at and offer a lot of extra surface area for heat dissipation it's got a nice glossy slightly glossy finish it's a bit slippery but the knurling really helps with that. And I like how the knurling is very pronounced. I think this is necessary due to the smooth anodizing, but it's not sharp. It's got smoothed off edges everywhere, but it provides a nice, yeah, nice sort of resistance there. So it's not going to fall out of your hand. I don't like to use lights with lanyards attached to them. This is a close up of the SFT70, perfectly aligned in their smooth reflector the bezel and head is yeah like i said larger than most tactical flashlights at 39 millimeters but you do get some extra throw as well anti-reflective glass there on the front bezel also has three glass uh, breaking beads okay as you can see here these three glass breaking beads got a nice accented color as well this nice blue color can't unscrew it, can't undo anything on the light really except for the tail cap. 
And the vibration motor is somewhere in the head of the light, maybe somewhere in here. This is the tail switch, nicely machined, aesthetically pleasing. It's dual stage, so you press like halfway and then full way to access the two different modes. It's got a clean, interesting sort of design. And yeah, that's where the charging cable attaches to. So I'll just show you a quick demonstration of the UI. So half press allows you to get into this um, lowest mode, 300 lumens. Okay, half press quickly to turn off, half press on quickly off. That's the lowest mode. Full press on for high, full press off again. Um, another thing you can do if you can hold, you press and hold halfway, press and hold halfway, you get tactical mode. Okay, if you press and hold full, you get uh, tactical mode on the highest mode and switch off. That is basically it. And with tactical flashlights, I like the fact that they use simple modes in here. I mean, some people like to have a moonlight mode in these lights, but I really use these lights for moonlight mode. If I have, if I want moonlight mode, I'll have an, another light or something like that that uh, is easier and more for everyday general use. This is more designed for overall throw and performance. So yeah, two simple modes in there. There's also no lockout mode, so you're gonna have to turn the tail cap a little bit. It's only like a one eighth turn or something like that so that it doesn't make contact with the battery and you're completely fine. So I ran a couple of ceiling bounce tests and this is the first one on high. Light starts out on 100%, starts dropping very, very slightly, but it stays within 95 to 100% up until the two minute mark. So you pretty much get almost 100% of output to two minutes on this light, which is pretty impressive. But it does drop very suddenly and you can see here it drops to just under 50% at the two minute mark and pretty much just stays there. And I left that on for about 14 minutes. At the 14 minute mark, it drops again to just under 40% of the output. And what I tried to do at some of these points as well was to reactivate the turbo. It would not reactivate. I ran a second ceiling bounce test and you can see here just on the lowest mode, it's maintaining 100%. I ran that test for close to 16 minutes and there was no difference whatsoever. So the low mode is very well regulated. Obviously the high mode, you don't get gonna get as much sustained output on that high mode. When you're in high mode and the light steps down, you do have to wait for the light to cool down properly before you can actually reactivate the high mode again. So I ran some tests with my Oppo Lightmaster Pro and on the low mode, you can see 206 meters, quite respectable and high 585 meters of throw. And a lot of people might think that's not so impressive, but for an SFT 70 light, which has a larger uh, emitter, as you can see here, largest die surface, it's very difficult actually, unless you have a larger reflector to get this thing to throw that far. If you put an SFT 40 in there, it's gonna, well, and this sort of reflector is going to throw a lot further, maybe 700, 800 meters, I'm not sure, but uh, something like this, I think that's pretty, pretty impressive for the SFT70. Color rendering index 68 and CCT6108. So color rendering is quite average and expected for this sort of LED. It's designed for visibility. Overall, this light has a beautiful beam profile. It's got a perfectly circular beam with no artifacts. And the edges of the beam are not completely circular though, something you should be aware of because when you've got this crenulated sort of bezel, you do get a little, little bit of a, f a funny effect on the edges, but it's not noticeable outside at all. Great heat management. I did not feel this light getting hot at all. The head did get a little bit warm. Um, I think Olight could probably push it a bit further if you ask me. All right, so some considerations to be aware of, and I'm gonna start with the elephant in the room. Magnetic charging and proprietary battery. That's something that is going to be an issue for some people out there, especially if you're more of a flashlight enthusiast and you like to have options in terms of different batteries, different ways to charge the flashlight, more convenient way to charge the flashlight. What if you lose the cable? You know, how are you gonna charge light? You have to buy a spare cable. Um, you need an external charger, maybe. So these are things that uh, I think if you're very much into your lights and you want options, you want the ability to have a lot of backup options, especially 
may not be the light for you okay but i have found that you can actually charge the battery externally if you contact uh, if you can make contact with the positive terminal so i do have an external charger you just gotta some people modify their charges add a bit of solder onto the uh, one of the the prongs of their charger so that it can make contact with the positive uh, terminal. The good thing about proprietary batteries and charging is that Olight can achieve consistency in their light performance and hit those specs that they specify on their lights. And as many of you guys know, there are different battery brands, grades that can lead to drastically different performance. But most of all, you know, you have people out there that just don't care about researching lights, about finding the best battery configuration about all these different options on there the proprietary battery and charging i think appeals to a more mainstream audience that just wants a plug and play option chuck the battery in there plug the magnetic charger add the magnetic charger light charges up easy you don't even need to think about anything else like I mentioned before, there's also no moonlight mode or a true low mode. Okay, the lowest mode is on 300 lumens, so that's another consideration. So overall, I know Olight can be divisive with enthusiasts, but if you can get past their widespread Apple-like popularity, the proprietary charging, and you don't mind paying the extra price tag, this is one solid tactical flashlight that packs a punch. Overall feel and build quality is excellent, and I like the creature comforts of magnetic charging. Just that plug and play ease of use. There's no need for long instruction manuals. So if you're interested in this light, I've left a link in the description. You can check it out. And if you have any questions, comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you. Finally, if you found this video helpful and enjoyable, do me a favor and click the like button. It helps me to get it out to more people. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews, make sure you subscribe. All right, you've got the Warrior X3. And I'm going to put it on the low mode. There's only two modes, low and high. Makes it easy for these shots. So that's low. And I mean, that is, for a low mode, it's still pretty high. I tell you, that's 300 lumens. But it's making quite easy work of this field up ahead. I really like that round hotspot. It's just, it's just perfect. I don't know how else to describe it. Perfectly round and smoothed off around the edges. Okay, look at that. But you still have a bit of spill here on the ground. Okay, decent amount of spill to see what is going on. But it is impressive that it is able to still reach, tint the trees out the back. Now let's put this on turbo or the high mode, really. Oh my god, look at that. This is impressive. Really impressive. I don't know how else to describe it, but the, the beam is just... It's just really, really clean. And compared to some of the other lights that I have, they throw just as far, but the quality of the beam is just something something extraordinary i don't know how else to describe it you can see it on camera anyhow but just how circular it is and how focused it really is like a little portable hot spot making easy Easy uh, pickings of the, all these trees out the back, that field in the center as well there. You can just see all the way to the back, tinting those trees. It's not really hitting, I don't think it's hitting the, that tree right at the back in the center, that darker tree at the back. That would be something like seven, 700 plus meters. But it is hitting everything else. Okay. Up close, it's just so bright. Um, now let's put it back onto the low mode again. Still quite sufficient. I like that the hotspot is quite large as well. And even the spill around the hotspot 
is a teeny bit brighter just where the center spot separates out you can see it's just a little brighter I believe it's starting to step down a little at this stage output is reducing a bit and when the output starts reducing you essentially just have to wait turn it off and wait until it cools down I don't know if you can swap into the lower mode like that um, oh it actually did activate it again turbo or the highest mode it's a very impressive light and with that SFT 70 you really need you know you really need a chunky sort of head in order to maintain the output go for a walk And you could see me before just kind of trying to reactivate the turbo and it wouldn't reactivate again. Uh, and then suddenly it's just reactivated. I think that there is definitely a sensor inside. I don't think it's a timer. It just, I guess, picks up the heat of the flashlight because it is ramping down faster as well. So there is some kind of sensor in there. And that's a good thing. I mean, with a light with such a powerful LED, you don't want it to, definitely don't want it to burn itself out. And um, yeah, nice. And it's kind of warm on the hands, but it is not uncomfortable at all. I really think they could even push it further, if you ask me. There we go, it's reactivated again.